Hey players, this is Freyza, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Mugen character. But first of all, you want the following programs. 1. Mugen itself. 2. Coral PaintShop Pro X8 or Coral PaintShop Pro X7. Uh, you'll want the one month trial, so after about 6 weeks or... Uh, for me it was like 7 weeks, but whatever. I mean, just because I only used it for like 1 minute at a time. Um, and when that runs out you can use the other one, so I went from X8 to X7, but they do what Z did for um, Mugen, which is basically just decreasing the colour dip to a 256-bit palette so that it can be, PNG images can um, be colour indexed and have their palette recorded and then they can be inserted into Mugen later on without any loss of data and you don't need to use Better Factory Classic to record I mean to save the palette and then index it, it's complicated. Basically it just does what we need it for, so yeah. Uh, the next is um, eye draw. So once you um, you get a sprite sheet, you open it up in um, Coral Paint Job Pro X7 or X8, then you decrease the colour depth, I'll just show you later on, and then you save it and that records the palette to the image and records the positioning of every colour and um, which basically does that Okay, and then you can open up an eye draw eye draw only opens up images that have been colour indexed and have their palette recorded and then with eye draw you just save it I mean you can change the palette and stuff as well but it's, I don't mess with that, I just do it in Fair Factory 3 uh, anyway and then finally you'll want Alfred's Spray Sheet Unpacker and what this does is um, after you have your um, Color Index Palette which has been through Coral Paint Pro X7 or X8 and it's been through um, iDraw you can then... I'll just show you an example real quick mm, take the Frankie I just used I'm actually making Frankie right now the uh, sprites making sure they're um, separated properly deleting like the random pixels uh, fixing things and then you'll find out when you insert it that uh, none of the images are um, color index so I'll uh, do this later on too but just to you know give you a feel for it uh, yes yeah, like this it will automatically split them into separate images you can go into options and change the distance between frames but I don't generally mess with that if there's a problem with the sprite sheet what I'll do is uh, let me just find the problem real quick uh, there's quite a few in this one, but I could have sworn there was one there. You might need to look pretty closely. Well, that's enough problem. So if I wanted to connect these because they're separated, I would click this, then click this, combine selected, and then there's another problem where um, if two are separated and you want to, um, let's say these are connected but they're not supposed to be you will right click anywhere in the image and that will create um, a line showing the vertical and horizontal axis and you put it in the centre here then move it all the way to the bottom or top uh, actually it's probably better not to be that close to the bottom because you can just connect them later and just click like that and then you can connect the parts you want to connect deselect all and connect them so that's what we need um, Alfred Spreach and Backer for. And then before we uh, export, we um, click Preserve Palette to save the palette data. Otherwise, we'll lose all our palette data, <laughs> making the first two steps pointless. But anyway, let's go into the main um, tutorial now that we've done a brief uh, cap of what we're about to do. So open up your uh, Internet Explorer and uh, go onto a sprite, a sprite sheet website like Sprite Database. Um, whatever website you like for sprites. I should know if you have this off my head, but I'm a little tired today. I've got the flu, but pretty much recovered. Um, I'm going for all the One Piece characters, so um, if you look here, you'll see there's some nice um, sprite sheets. I wouldn't start with these because they're very complicated, and also I'm doing it, so get off my turf. But <laughs> uh, A lot of Naruto games here. I've not actually looked too much into these. That's a little too complicated. Okay, uh, try and pick something simple.
So this series looks pretty good for use of the tutorial. I'm going to take Cine Tuxedo and download that to my uh, desktop. Cine, I'll put that in a folder later once we start organising things. That'll download pretty much instantaneously. So we'll close that. Cine, it's going to create the folder here. Just before we um get our sprite sheets and sprites in a mix. And then we're going to open up Coral Paint Shop Pro X7 or X8. <laughs> okay, that's that. Now you can delete everything in your, pa in your um, sprite sheet that you do not need. Because this will mess up your palette, because often these will have different colours than the, um, than the main sprite sheet, so that will be problematic if it starts cutting out colours and replacing them and such. Uh, that should be fine. Uh, normally I would delete these white lines, but I'll just delete them later and once we've exported everything. Okay, so. Uh, delete any extra layers that have appeared here and image decrease color depth 256 color ok and then file save as Suna indexed. And now if this is open we'll want to open up our spreadsheet. Now the beauty of Coral Paint Shop is that it will record what um, background colour is uh, being used automatically so we don't need to worry too much about deleting that. Uh, but everything in this image will be added to um, our palette so we'll want to delete all the colours we don't need right now. You can, um, we'll be saving this under a different name so if you want to go back and add in more stuff from the spreadsheet later on what you can do is open up again and only export that and do the, um, the eye draw process again. Actually I'm not sure, I don't think that's even necessary if you're only um, doing for one image because that's just for uh, alpha spreadsheet and backer. Okay, we need two images. One is for the character selection menu and one is for the, um, the icon right next to the health bar. So I'll copy this. Whoops, didn't even copy. That's embarrassing. It's on the wrong layer. We can delete this layer. Yes. A file new and that's 120 pixels by 140 pixels. Okay. Control V that in and then with this arrow icon I can drag this around to make it fit. Oh that will flatten the layers so that's actually a problem. That might make white I'm not sure what it does exactly but it might make uh, white the default background colour and we don't want that. That's happened before actually. We want green to be the default, but sometimes it will make it white or like maybe even orange, so hopefully it will be green, so you might want to select a larger portion so that it will determine that the green off screen is part of the background, and the background is what it will make invisible, and it will avoid the orange being the invisible part. And then I'll take this small icon here, although it's far too large, but who cares? 25 pixels horizontally and 25 pixels vertically, OK. And the same thing here. This is going to look awful, but uh, in a lot of the edits and begins, um, you can barely even see the head icon, so like the one used for salty bits. So it's not too important because nobody will really be looking at it anyway, but that should do. And save as. and close Paint Shop Pro. 
Now open up Hydra. Sina, Sina indexed. This is far too zoomed in. Let's see the palette here. That's pretty bad. Uh, let's see the. Hmm. I know there's a button here for duplicate colors, but no, nah, whatever. You can mess around with this and see what it does, but <laughs> generally, I just immediately save it as uh, Sunet Index too. <laughs> now close that. Now open up Alfred Sprite Shot Unpacker. Now this is where the magic happens. And drag your entire Sprite Sheet in again, as I did before at the start of the tutorial. Oh, I didn't notice that. That's pretty bad actually. <laughs> That's why it's so many colours, because it had three uh, whatever. I guess I can use them myself for the alternate palettes, so you'll want to go through this quickly and it can be pretty tedious, but connect any split up parts of the sprite sheet together, like so. Separate any connected parts which aren't supposed to be connected. Uh, anything else major? Yeah, that. Got to do this first. Don't bother with the tiny pixels, that's not worth the time, plus it causes weird errors. But there, don't want his defensive form cape being messed up. I do like some cat go hit my underborn, so I'll probably finish this, but I'd like to ask what character you're making, but <laughs> of course I won't know for a while, but please post in the comments because I am genuinely interested. A lot of notes but the person who ripped this, they did realise that it causes problems later, like I've never read any of the notes, so I don't know why they put it there, but I appreciate the work they put into riffing the sprites, so I probably shouldn't complain too much about it. Without them, there would be no sprites, and the lack of moving characters would be depressing, but thanks to the work they put into riffing sprites from all sorts of games, we have thousands and thousands of moving characters. Perfect. Okay, now make sure you absolutely preserve palette. This is very important. So options, preserve palette. Um, I wouldn't mess it in with any other settings. You can if you want, but I wouldn't. Update and close, make sure you press that too. I have messed up in both of these parts, not preserving the palette, then not updating and closing, which means the palette isn't preserved. Sina, uh, actually I'm going to create a new folder. I've got an inhabitant for something called Sina Sprays. And I'm going to put, no I don't want to do that right now, I don't want to mess up any files. So later on I'll put Sina inside Sina Sprites, just to keep everything neat. Now select all. Uh, if it shows any error messages, go into wherever you exported it and uh, so it will automatically export to Alfred, so type in your, um, your file name, mine's is desktop Sina Sprites. Um, if it shows any error messages, it will have exported the sprites up to the point where it had the error, so just then um, delete all the sprites and then manually left click and export everything so uh, the problem is it's probably exporting with tiny pixels or um, a glitchy area so you might need to do that manually but it's just two minutes of left clicking so hey export and no errors oh, yeah no errors that's perfect so you don't want to close this because you probably will have some problems so uh, I like to keep that open for at least 10 minutes until I go through this and delete everything I don't need and try and assert what sprites I've got. So delete all the random pixels, random text, the versions left. Take about two minutes tops. You may not even have any depending on which sprites you used. Once you've edited your sprite sheet, you'll want to look for your intro sprites, your running sprites, um, your crouching sprites, your blocking sprites, your heart sprites, and label them as so. so I'll take uh, all of these. I 
much I think I am um, selected when in the wrong order. So I want to risk that messing up. And save that as walk. I mean, we name it as walk, sorry. Crouch. Lose sprite. Although there's a few other heart sprites that these could be using, so what I do is create a heart folder for when the character is injured. Name that heart and uh, paste all of the sprites into here. Large icons. And I'm going to name this lose. to name this one hit from hit up from the ground uh, copy paste this I'm also going to name this get up copy and paste this again and rename them bound There should be some sprites for the character being injured a little less seriously than that. Yeah, yeah, these ones. Paste them. I'm going to name this one Hit Low. This one Hit High. And this one Hit Torso. Ah, uh, this one too actually. Yeah, this will be good for the Hit Hard. Any more Hit Hard one I could use for when the character is Hit Hard but not High? Yeah, that one will be Hit while Couching. I'll choose this one for all the hit hards. So hit hard, hit crouching. Now we we'll want the block sprites because we we'll need to make we we'll need block sprites for when the character is standing, crouching, and air. Uh, if you're not going to be, you can use the stand ones for crouching. You also want an intro. I think I'll just use these for the intro, just a simple two frame intro. It's extremely lazy, but I copy these and name that idle. Actually, that should be part of the intro too, whatever. Okay, so we just need the blocking. Uh, surely it doesn't... Yeah, I guess that... Yeah, it kind of makes sense. So these are the blocking sprites, I guess. A lot of... Hmm. Yeah, he can use it instantaneously, so it doesn't make sense. Looks like there's no crouch blocking, though, so that's kind of annoying, but... Yeah, I'm just going to name these blocking. Is there any ear blocking? Yeah, I'll use this for ear blocking. So that's for start blocking and when the cat is actually blocking. And uh, blocking end as well. So paste these and rename them ear block. Actually, it should be block ear, not ear block, because you'll be looking at block later. And yeah, there. So we've got ear block and blocking, and that'll be used for crouch block as well. Perfect. Okay, so with that done, we close this, and next we'll be going on to how to set up the character in the Mugen itself in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.